I'm Hulk Hogan, the greatest wrestler of all time. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. You got space, man, huh? No, actually, I'm a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't go anywhere without getting a boner. How you doing? I live my life. Woo! The Rock says, Sweet baby Jesus in the office. Hello everyone, welcome to Wrestle Rock Podcast. We are your host, Nostrada Ben, and uh, my colleague, uh, Jonathan. Uh, how, do, how are you doing, Jonathan? Yes, I'm going great, and you? Oh, fine, and you? Yes, and you know what? What? Today we have a special guest, another one, so... Former WWE talent. Yes, uh, we have uh, Mr. Dick, uh, Nick uh, Dinsmore, a.k.a. Eugene. How are you today, my friend? I'm good, guys. How are you? Yes, not, not very bad, good. not bad. So, uh, first of all, uh, Mr. Uh, Dinsmore, uh, thank you so much for being here. Oh, yeah. We know that you are very busy with uh, a lot of things. Uh, so, uh, we go forward with uh, some questions. So, uh, go ahead, my friend. Yeah, of uh, course. The first question, yeah. Uh, you were very successful in OVW. Uh, you were 10-time uh, Southern Tag Team Champion with your uh, longtime uh, friend, uh, Rob Conway and 10 times a world champion. Did you prefer to wrestle in a singles or in a tag team? Um, it really didn't matter. Uh, when, when, I, when I was younger, I, I enjoyed singles matches, but I feel like the tag matches can be more dramatic. And because there's so many players uh, uh, in, in the ring, you can do a lot more things. And it's, 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 uh, it can make the match more exciting in a tag match. Okay. 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 And... Um... Uh, you made your uh, WWE uh, debut on Raw uh, 2004 against uh, good friends of us, <laughs> uh, Rob Conway from uh, La Résistance, uh, with uh, friends of mine also, uh, Sylvain Grenier from Montreal. Yeah. Uh, we say hi to, uh, to Sylvain. Uh, can you share um, us uh, your, uh, your first uh, match and accomplishment? Um. It was, it was super exciting. Uh, I had, you know, presented the character. They written me onto TV in several weeks, introducing Eugene. He finally had his first match, and people were there with signs saying, I came to see Eugene. And uh, it, was, it was really super cool. And to be able to wrestle Rob Conway, who had been wrestling for probably eight years prior, thousands of matches, I was tag partners with him, I was opponents against him, was uh, was, was really special. And, and I knew that he could take care of me and make me look, uh, better than you know anybody in the in the locker room. So it was really you know, it was really cool. And then when Eugene got his first win, prior to that, I never received any uh, uh, like flack or, or any uh, uh, criticism. I think mm -hmm. some media personality said, "What is WWE doing now? What are what are they doing with this character?" But once Eugene won his first match, everybody goes, "Oh, it's it's a it's it's an underdog story about a you know a boy achieving his dream." Okay, I uh, I read uh, somewhere uh, on the on the web on the internet uh, that uh, the idea of uh, Eugene gimmick uh, came from uh, former OVW trainer uh, Rip Rogers, uh, who inspired it uh, by uh, his artistic uh, son. Was uh, Vince McMahon easily convinced by this idea? Well, we got to back up about a year. At that time, in Ohio Valley Wrestling, in the developmental system for WWE. Mm -hmm. Agents yeah. would come down every week. Guys like Arn Anderson, Fit Finley, Dean Malenko, and uh, Rip had given me this idea. What about a, a wrestler that you know isn't very social? He, he might not be able to lace his boots, but he can do everything that he that he sees uh, in the ring because he's watched wrestling his whole life. He's a super fan. And there was a another side to Eugene that we that we never really got fleshed out was that e Eugene knew all the trivia. He, he knew every you could ask him any question, and he would know the date and you know every every fact about wrestling. And uh, I presented that character to the agents. And I remember uh, some of the agents were like, you know, wrestling's kind of gone beyond that. We're, we're more reality-based now. You know, we, we don't do that. Okay. And I was getting to a point where I'd been under contract for about five years in the developmental system. And eventually, you either get called up or you get released, you know. So uh, 
I remember the writers came down one week, and the writers didn't come down often. They maybe only came down two or three times. I presented the idea to the writers. Vince would never do that. The, the Vince wouldn't do a character like that. Okay. <laughs> so time goes on. You know, it, it was probably three months from when Rip gave me the idea until the agents came down. Maybe another three or four months before the writers came down. Another three or four months goes by, and uh, I saw a lot of guys didn't like living in Louisville that weren't from Louisville. And they said uh, they, they would complain and they would get called up. The squeaky wheel gets the oil, right? So I told Doug Basham, I said, I think I'm going to quit and try to go to Japan. But I had, I had no intention of, of quitting because I, I didn't know anybody in Japan. I had no idea how to get there. I, I was, you know, I'm making a good living wrestling in my hometown, written on local TV as a top baby face or heel, whatever I was. And uh, I just wanted to see what would happen. So Dean told uh, – um, Doug Basham told Dean Malenko – D. Malenko tells Johnny Ace. Next thing I know, in uh, February 2004, I was sitting in a meeting with Vince McMahon. And uh, Vince goes, I want to get back to character-based wrestling. <laughs> so I just presented the, the, the idea of the character. And he's scratching his, you know, scratching his chin, thinking about it. The Rain Man of Wrestling. <laughs> Stephanie McMahon was also in, in the meeting. And she was, you know, throwing some ideas around. Steve Austin had come back for, I think, I think they taped a Saturday Night's Main event or something. He, he, he had an episode on the show. He walks into Vince's office. Vince goes, Steve, have you ever seen this guy wrestle? Austin looks at me and goes, no, I don't think I have. I said, well, uh, Danny Davis trained me because I knew that Nightmare Danny Davis and Austin became friends when they wrestled in the Dallas Territory. And uh, Austin looks at me and goes, well, he's probably one of the best. And it was like that vote of confidence from Steve Austin, who didn't even know me, to Vince McMahon. Vince goes, great, we'll start on Monday. We ended up starting in, in May, uh, April, I think. I believe it was in April. Um I think it was easy to pitch the idea to Vince for him to try it, but I don't think anybody thought it would get over or succeed. I think it was, uh, let's let this guy try this. And if it doesn't work, we'll just release him. You know, he's, he's been under contract, you know, we don't know what to do with him. So, but I went out there and because I'd been wrestling for almost 10 years, I, I tell everybody I'm, I'm, I'm a, I was a 10 year overnight success. Uh, I had, you know, done so much. I, Made a lot of uh, mistakes, but I learned from each one of those mistakes. I never made the same mistake twice. So by the time I started on TV, they gave me a little bit, and I did well. So the next week, they gave me a little more, and I did well. And they just kept doing that, just kept giving me little bits, and I kept succeeding. A lot of guys, they, they got called up that didn't have the experience. They would get on live TV, and that's where they would be making the mistakes that they should have been making in, in the developmental system. And, you know, just the fact that I was a wrestling fan, and I'd watched so much comedy wrestling, and at the time – the, the brands, SmackDown and Raw, were split. And the only kid's character was, was Hurricane. And one of, the, one of the brands didn't have a kid's character. So, you know, a, a, a comedy, you know, sympathetic babyface. And I knew that's what I wanted to be because I wasn't going to be – everybody at the time, it, it was after Steve Austin, it was after the NWO, but everybody still wanted to be a cool, strong heel. I want to get all my moves in, but I'm a bad guy. I'm going to beat people up. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be funny. I wanted to be – I wanted to get beat up and, and just do everything opposite. It was a, a niche in the show that was not being fulfilled that I felt that I filled. Yeah, and it is what it is, and that works. Is that that work? And uh, we have a uh, uh, a proof here. So yeah, do you remember uh, this front page? Yes, I have that also. Yes, good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, you yeah. Uh, you were on the face cover of the Pro Wrestling Illustrated yeah, yeah, in yeah. Uh, somewhere two thousand four, if my memory is good. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, 2004. Yes, 2004, yeah. and uh, that's a uh, a big accomplishment. So, so when I was eight years old, I, I got this taken. Wow! Hi. <laughs> and, and and I always wanted to be on the cover of, of Pro Wrestling Illustrated, and I ended up being on the cover of Pro Wrestling Illustrated. So that that was really a, an accomplishment. Nice. Yeah, you are uh, in team uh, with uh, Rob Conway. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sir, OVW yes. Southern Tag Team, if I remember. Yes. Sir. And um, if my memory is good, in September uh, 2004, you fought uh, against uh, Triple H at Raw in a steel cage match. So uh, can you, can you uh, consider uh, this match as uh, one of your best matches in your career? I don't know if it's one of my best. I just got beat up the whole time. But it was my one and only steel. Well, I don't think I've ever been in a steel cage match other than that one. But it was, it, was, it was exciting, and, you know, Eugene didn't have to get moves in. He didn't have to get offense in. He didn't have to win. 
Uh, I got beat up, and I got beat up bad, and then Eugene got sympathy. So it was a good match. It carried on the storyline, um, you know. And you are one of uh, a proof that a, res a wrestler with a gimmick oh, yeah. that can uh, that can do everything, if you know what I mean. So uh, go ahead, my friend. Yeah, of course. Uh, about uh, gimmicks. Yes. Huh? My, uh, about gimmicks, uh, <laughs> you interpret uh, another uh, gimmick. So go ahead, my friend. With uh, oh gimmick. yeah, of course. Uh, under what uh, circum circumstances uh, did you perform uh, Doink the Clown? You mean Doink the Clown? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think Doink the Clown should be in the WWE Hall of Fame. He is he is an instantly recognizable character that's been on WWE programming for over 20 years, and the fans yeah. know exactly who he is. Um, they were doing a pay per view in. Colorado. Okay. Uh, it was JBL's barroom brawl, and yeah, yeah. they had they wanted to have Doink the Clown, and uh, Brooklyn Brawler had been playing Doink the Clown previous to that. So when <clears throat> Doink the Clown came out, everybody thought it was Brooklyn Brawler, but then the Brooklyn Brawler comes out, and it was just it was just an opportunity that I got to uh, to be Doink the Clown. Then when I was at the pay per view, they said, you know what, we want don't we want they wanted Nick Dinsmore to wrestle Chris Benoit, but they wanted. Nick Dinsmore is doing the clown. So they said on SmackDown, you're going to wrestle as doing the clown again against Chris Benoit. And we want you to go 20 minutes on TV. And I scratched my head. I said, Doink hasn't been on TV in years. And it's, it, whatever he was most recently, it was always a short comedy bit. And you want me to go 20 minutes. Toe to toe was one of the top guys <clears throat> They came back a little bit later in the day. So well, no, maybe, maybe 15 minutes. Okay. It came back a little later, maybe 10 minutes. And it, it got cut down to, I think, 90 seconds, which is exactly what it should have been. You know, <laughs> went out there and squirted him with the with the flower that squirts the water, and he got mad and beat me up, which was exactly what you know it needed to be. But I think they wanted Nick Dinsmore against Chris Benoit because I had wrestled him. He came to Louisville and wrestled me in Louisville and was like the biggest star that I wrestled in Louisville and really made me a big star in Louisville. Um I ended up wrestling him on Monday Night Raw as Eugene, so we got the match in. But uh, on that SmackDown, I just got beat up and dropped on my head. So you told us uh, about Rome Brawl. Uh, was it at uh, Vengeance 2003? I believe so. Yes, yes. Okay, ju just before SummerSlam uh, mm -hmm. 2003. Okay. And uh, you're talking about uh, Chris Benoit uh, earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your toughest opponent in your career, and why? Very well, could have been Chris. Could have been Triple H. Uh, it could have been Doug Basham or Rob Conway. All those guys I had very good matches with, and they were all, you know, very tough and very physical. Um, mm -hmm. And, and I, I used to enjoy that style, but now not so much. But uh, I look back on those matches very fondly. And I uh, and I, and I imagine that Kurt Angle uh, could be. Uh, I got like Kurt Angle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he beat yeah. The, he beat the bejesus out of me. He pulled my hair. He blacked my eye. That was right. Eugene wrestled Kurt Angle. It was an honor because Vince asked Kurt, who do you want to have a program with? Because they wanted to build him as a monster heel against, uh, and then eventually have him work John Cena. And that's when he started wearing the mouthpiece. Kurt had all this great comedy stuff written for Eugene. He wanted to wrestle Eugene because he wanted to wrestle the guy with the most sympathy in the locker room. And he had all this funny stuff that he wanted to do. With it. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, funny promo. Yeah. Yeah. We need you to be strong. We, we need you to be you know, a, a good heel. So he just manhandled me and beat me but uh i got to wrestle SummerSlam against uh against kurt angle in washington so that was pretty cool 2005 yeah yes and you uh b before you won his gold medal yes i won his gold medal <laughs> how did you feel when you won this gold medal <laughs> i felt like i was an olympic champion Okay. <laughs> And about a uh, far uh, funny fact you're probably uh, one of the best uh Uh, funny person uh, in the, the wrestling industry. Can you share uh, with us a, a funny story uh, as a, a story inside or uh, outside of the, the pro wrestling? Uh... So I met my wife in uh, September of 2004. She lived here in Sioux Falls. I still lived in Louisville. When I was on yeah. the road, you know, I would call her every night and uh, text her, whatever. So one night I had a couple one too many and I was texting her something a little racy you know maybe what I would like to do to her the next time I saw her I didn't realize that until I got up the next morning that on my contacts list right next to Stephanie was Shelton Benjamin 
I had texted Shelton everything that I thought I was texting her. So I come in the locker room the next day, and Shelton's like, you're not going to put that in there. I'm not going to be doing that. We're not going to. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. He was the wrong person. He, he, he knew what it was. He thought it was funny. But, uh, it was a little, uh, uh, I sexted, I sexted Shelton Benjamin. So it's kind of a, a cool <laughs> <opinion. laughs> Okay. Is uh, Triple H uh, really your uh, favorite wrestler, Eugene? Uh, oh, absolutely. All the time. Okay. Yes, because you said uh, you said that uh, on the row uh, in 2004, if I remember. Yes, and um, for ending, uh, Mister uh, Dinsmore, uh, as usual, uh, my partner uh, Benoit, aka Nostradamus Ben. It's all about the French prophet. Uh, that's why he have uh, this uh, nickname. Uh, he tried to predict the future of our guests, so go ahead, my friend. Yeah, of course. Uh, first of all, thank you, Mr. Dunsmore, for the interview. Very appreciated. You're a good guy, a funny guy, too. <laughs> no okay, problem. I say. <laughs> okay. I predict to you uh, probably a WWE Hall of Fame uh, induction, and you will be inducted by your longtime friend, uh, Rob Conway. In a few years, no, no, not right no, now. But... Cool. I, I, I think, like I said, I think Doink the Clown should be in the WWE Hall yeah. of Fame because, and I think I think seven guys or eight guys have played Doink the Clown, and I think they all should be inducted. The origin, but, you, know, is... you know, the best part about having your own action figure is you get to play with yourself in public. <laughs> the first dunk was uh, Matt Bourne. Correct. Yes, and there is a um, there, there was a Ray Apollo, Ray Apollo, Marie's Chris Jericho, Drew Brooklyn Brawler. Brawler. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah, Brawler. Yeah. Steve Kern did it. Um, I think someone recently did it. I, I did it, of course, and uh, I think one of the headbangers did it. I think, but I'm not positive. Okay. Mosh or Trasher? I don't know. I don't know which one it was. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Perfect. So thank you so much for your time. Uh, this oh, yeah. is very appreciated. So uh, we wish you all the best. Uh, take care and uh, have a great day, my friend. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Goodbye, Mr. Densmore.